Hello everyone out there in the multiverse. I am Dan. And I'm Drea. And we own Multiverse Comics in Culpeper, Virginia. And today, what we want to talk about is some things to watch while you are in quarantine lockdown. Now, the idea is that there are plenty of things on Netflix and Disney and Hulu, etc., Amazon, that are based on comics. Some of them are worth your watch. Some of them are definitely not. So we're going to try to give you our opinion anyway of things that are worth your time and things that really should not even be watched even when you have literally nothing else to do. Go watch some paint dry rather than watch this particular show. Just saying. You hated it that much, really? Really? I'm just saying. Okay, okay let's continue on. Let's go. I have very strong feelings. Okay. All right. I'm an right, emotional right, person. Right. What are we going to talk about first? I want to talk about Lock and Key because yes. we just finished watching that and really that's that's the main reason because it is not my favorite on this list. But is the one that we just finished watching. In fact, when we went to Galaxy Con a couple weeks ago, I specifically stopped at a vendor and got a, a key necklace. Now, this is not actually based on lock and key because it's still fairly new. Um, it this was from I want to say Fairy Tale. I could be wrong, but anyway, so I found the the key that looked the most like a lock and key key, and uh, so I'm, I'm wearing it in in reference to that. But lock and key is based on. What comic miniseries? A comic, yeah. By by Joe Hill, who is Thinking Sun. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glad you made. I'm trying to make you part of this. Okay, okay. I'm here. So what happened was Dan watched the show first, and then he's like, "Dre, you've got to watch this." And I was like, "Okay." So we watched it again, and it's really funny because he's actually very good at at uh, at not giving spoilers. And so, uh, but there are definitely times when I could just kind of feel him tensing up, and I'm like, what, what, nothing, yeah. nothing? <laughs> See, I, I, I have been aware of Lock and Key for several years. I knew nothing about it, didn't read it, anything like that, and then I heard the show was going, so I went completely blind, and so I figure if you can, go in completely blind, knowing nothing about the series, it yeah. makes a better experience than that. I agree. Usually, adaptations from uh, comics, I cannot do that because I know too much about comics um but with this i was able to do it and it was it was a great experience yeah, yeah. um now i will say the last episode and maybe the last episode and a half were kind of anticlimactic for me to a degree but but honestly just for a first season of anything they were phenomenal i mean they yeah. were not firefly but they were phenomenal i really really enjoyed <laughs> nothing's it. firefly nothing's firefly that bar is way too high yeah. <laughs> nothing just... will ever top firefly as far as i'm concerned uh so watch lock and key i highly recommend them uh, on a side note yeah i'm sure you can stream firefly somewhere just watch yes that if you first. have not watched watch that, that first, recently yeah. we're watch not firefly. that's not on our list to talk about but she brought it up so i had to mention 14 episodes watch, in a movie yeah. do it watch firefly have your kids not seen it yet uh yeah. watch it yeah definitely watch any it. reason yeah basically um also look up uh the cast of flash sings the ballad of serenity on youtube oh my gosh i need to remember to link that oh my gosh i love it so much i found a way to work it into my lesson plans this year i was so excited anyway um i do what i can <laughs> indoctrinate them all what's the next thing um the next thing mandalorian mandalorian yes it's a there's a little character that's been introduced in the Star Wars thing He's, that I mean, has been, sort of know you know, him a people little bit. know a little bit about him. It's it like, is the child, by the way. It is not Baby, Baby Yoda. Yoda. It is the child. Baby Yoda. Or the foundling. You don't know a species. It's the Baby child. Yoda. Just say it. It's the child. Whatever. Foundling or the child. Anyway. This is the kind of argument Stop. we have. Mandalorian. <laughs> really great. Uh, technically more based on um, a series of movies. Th this is one of two shows that we have that uh this the comic books are retroactive star wars have been a comic since like the 60s so i think it can count anyway i'm just saying i'm just i'm i'm a purist okay since the original movies they've had comics okay i'm a purist okay let's talk about what came first source material is important yeah i married well, you yeah, fair enough anyway uh so the source material is important and it uh i want to acknowledge for other purists out there especially literary purists, that the movies did technically come first, but there is literature. Uh, in fact, um, I had a uh, administrator who told me that he was not allowed to watch the original Star Wars films until he had read the novels, even though they came after. So there is that. So there, the comics, books tie in to movies, shows, Mandalorian, really great. Because, uh, yes, you have the adorable character um, who will, will just break your heart in so many ways and, and, and just make you go squeeze so many times. If you're a fangirl, uh, he did not squee much at all, um, which is disappointing, but that's okay. 
I'll forgive him. But uh, even the Mandalorian um, is a great character. There's other characters too, uh, and I, I don't want to get into too much. But they they have catchphrases like the like every time you meet a new character, they center themselves into the story in a way that you recognize and you you connect with them very clearly. Am, mm -hmm. am I right in that? Yes, very. I, I mean, yeah. it's it's really amazing. Even if you never see the character again, there's a connection there between the audience and and the character, which is. I'm baffled as to how it's done because it's so beautifully done. It's really, really great. And it all centers around this Mandalorian character and then the child. Okay, so Mandalorian definitely one uh, we would recommend. Third one, I, I, I want to say that I love this one more than you do. Um, probably, which is Umbrella yeah, Academy. Yeah. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it, but yeah, oh. she, she she loves it more. She's Klaus is my with... baby, and he needs to be hugged. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I love Klaus so much, so very very much. I just want to hold him and and protect him from everything. Um, he's so beautiful, and the the actor that plays number five. Wow, mind boggling. Like, perfect Damian Wayne, if they ever Seriously. Do that. Like, yes, absolutely. He would be the perfect Damian Wayne. Although, number five is nothing like Damian Wayne. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that the actor has those chops. Yeah. Um, all the actors are very, very good. Uh, I really have no issues with it. Um, there's even some CGI that is very well done. So, Umbrella Academy is based on comics, which I admit I have not read yet. Uh, but the literature is out there, so uh, Umbrella Academy is one that I would definitely recommend, and um, and I know we've even mentioned it before because I yeah. enjoyed the show so very much. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, let's actually talk about Runaways first because that one technically came first, and then Cloak and Dagger was sort of an offshoot of Runaways. So, mm -hmm. kinda. It, here's the thing about Runaways. Um, so when he and I first started dating, the very first comic series that he gave me to read, I had read Come comics on. before. But the first comic book series that he gave me to read was uh, Marvel's Runaways. Because at the end of the second series, when when did Whedon write an arc? At the tail end of the second one. Yeah, tail end of the second. Is it series? Am I using the right word there? Volume. Volume. Yeah. Yeah. Second series, volume. volume. I guess it's interchangeable. Yeah. Joss Whedon had written an arc. And uh, he knew that I uh, absolutely love Joss Whedon. I had just been introduced to Firefly. Um... And so he's like, well, then you have to read this this comic series. And so I started reading it, read the first two volumes, and finished with um, Whedon's arc. And that was the last that I read. But I did really enjoy those. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping, I had high hopes going into the show. I, and don't get me wrong, I am definitely one of those that says, you know, do not judge the book by its movie. They are separate entities, and you have to see them each as their own thing. But even, w even with me giving that, that allowance... <sighs> Runaways kind of bugged me. They did change some things, uh, which I appreciated because you you really don't always want to see the exact replica of the story. Sometimes that can get very tedious. Um, and so I, I don't actually have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is they kind of started turning it into, well, a CW teenage show. Honestly, I, it's the, the same problems okay. I have with the same problems I have with um, Smallville and um, other shows of its ilk. Uh, Ridge. Ridge, Riverdale, Ridgevale, I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of Night Vale, so Vale's in my head, sorry, or listening to a lot of Night Vale. Um, uh, yeah, Riverdale, you know, the, the teenage CW things, all those cliches that are in there started showing up in Runaways, and so I honestly, I, I DNF'd it. So he's going to take over now because I, I did the same with, thing with Cloak and Dagger. I got like two and a half episodes in. I'm like, nope, sorry, I'm done. So I was not overly impressed with Runaways or Cloak and Dagger. However, he is, so tell us why. Well, I like it. I'm not overly impressed, but Fair it doesn't enough. take a lot to overly impress me, or to impress me, whatever. Um, the and first... you married me. I, I know. don't know I, what I, that I, says. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are some reasons that our viewers should watch Runaways and or Cloak and Dagger? Cloak and season Dagger. three, basically. All right. Get through the first two seasons. I mean, season one is pretty much like the first five of the vo first volume. Yeah. It's you know they it was good. They don't I run away one. until the end, you know, yeah. and that's. Um, I wish that they didn't do some of the changes that they did, but it it was an enjoyable show. Also, if they I, could not make Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that was a big spoiler, wasn't it? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it was a spoiler. Okay. Doctor Doom's not in there. He he's not. The actor who played Doctor Doom is in there. <laughs> And I don't it, think he has another gear. It's the original Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, and I don't think Doctor Doom has another gear. 
or the actor that played him. Anyway. The actor does. The actor is actually really good. I am impressed by that actor. Not necessarily from Runaways, but I've seen him okay. do some. He can act. Fair enough. Okay, so I was wrong. I blame the director of Fantastic Four why he was overly cheesy. Um, but we are we're moving on from moving that because that's a movie that came back out a while ago. We won't talk about Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, until until the MCU does one. Because I'm sure that will be fantastic. Can't yeah, see what I did there. <laughs> okay. Anyways, okay. Cloak and Dagger. She didn't like it so much, pretty much because it was very slow. The first season very, was very, very slow. slow. Yeah. The second season it picked up a little bit because they kind of were who they were supposed to be at this point. That's fair. Um. And I will say this. Let me let me just pause and say that uh, you know part of the reason that I part of the reason that I DNF anything, and when I say DNF, I mean did not finish. Um, part of the reason I DNF anything is, uh, because my time is extremely precious. Um, and so I, I'm not one to, like, I would rather go read more than, than watch Runaways. Whereas, um, Dan, when he budgets his time, he wants to experience these things, especially being the comic book owner or the comic shop owner. Um, you know, these are things that we, that's part of his research basically. So. Yeah, very much. So and, there's um, that. And Cloak and Dagger guest star on Runaway Season 3 mm -hmm. uh, for one episode. And it was uh, definitely a cameo episode. They, they you know, came up with a reason to get them off there at the end of the episode, <laughs> and they were gone. Uh. Um, but it was, it was enjoyable to have a little bit of crossover between two that, TV properties that aren't necessarily connected. Well, I mean... But they it, were connected from the comics because I was going to say, yeah, Dagger, that's how I know about Cloak and Dagger is it, from Marvel exactly, Broadway. Exactly. So. Um, it tied in for me. Yeah, it, 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 they're connected in that way, but I'm talking about they're technically on two different networks because one's a streaming Hulu show, the other one's on Free From. So yeah. there's crossover there, and other than that, and their comic origins, they don't really have connection. Cool. At all. So especially if you have all this extra free time, worth your time to at least delve into. Um, at, at, and like I said, I enjoyed it. It just wasn't worth me necessarily giving up my time when there were other things to be watching or reading or doing. Um, also want to mention, and I have not watched these, Dan has, the, the series is, is, is the, the set of series is, the, yeah. the shows, the set of shows, I'm an English teacher, that I think, <laughs> I think a lot of people are actually familiar with, which would be Daredevil, Punisher, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. And she can't say Iron Fist without laughing. That's an inside it's, joke, it's I'm an sorry. Joke. I try really hard to We're not, not going to. into it right now, but she cannot say his name without laughing. She cannot hear his name without laughing. So anyway, don't, talk about it. So him. if you want to be amused, um, <laughs> come in here when we're open and, and just say, say Iron, Iron Fist. Fist around her. She will crack up. <laughs> It'll be fun. All this stuff. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Why are they good? Oh, they're awesome. They, they are okay, awesome. Why? I have actually not finished Jessica Jones. That's the one I need to watch the most recent season. Um, because it was like okay. when they started Cancel Them, I lost steam. Yeah, you know? Sure. I love the shows. They are still good. I hate the fact that Luke Cage and Iron Fist um, I'm trying. <laughs> ended on a cliffhanger. Um, so that's that's that sucks. But they did essentially finish up Daredevil and Punisher. And I'm assuming they had a time to finish up Jessica Jones. I'm going to watch that soon. Um, I've enjoyed all of them. Especially Punisher. Like, I've seen clips of them. Punisher is good. They're, he is perfectly cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say yeah. most of them. For the they're, most part. They're, they're all perfectly cast. Yeah. But he embodies the character so much. I don't know if I could see someone else playing him as easily. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he just is Punisher. Like, he was introduced in Daredevil Season 2. And there's just like, I think it's like the second episode where he has Daredevil on a rooftop, and it's basically oh, it them scene. just talking. Oh, it was a great She scene. doesn't watch the shows, but I had her watch that episode. Mm -hmm. It was just a beautiful Girl, episode, and basically they were just talking to each other. Yeah. You know, and it was... It, so he is to Punisher as Ryan Reynolds is to Diffle. Yeah, uh, I would say that, yeah. Cool. Uh, so reasons to watch those shows. I mean, honestly, if you have not watched these shows by now, what are you even doing with yeah, your life? Yeah, they've and been out for a while, so most likely you've watched them if you're watching us. Uh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, and by the way, uh, sidebar, can we just kind of coin the phrase Firefly? Like if, if some network, for whatever reason, takes a beautiful show, especially a fan show, and for no reason at all cancels it, especially in a cliffhanger, can we just say that they Firefly'd it? 
Jeff. That sounds like a good Coin expression. Phrase, yeah, we, we came up with it. Yep. Yes. No one else. Sure. It's ours. Trademark. Um, next one I have not seen even a little bit, which is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And, you know, um, yeah, I'll let you take that it, one. Yeah, I it's, you know, I no Sabrina Teenage Witch, but, uh, darker. It's still, it's still very campy, but it is definitely darker. It's very good. It's, I don't want to mention too much stuff, but it is, it's definitely worth a watch. They're on their season three now, just recently released. Can you be dark and campy at the same time successfully? Yeah. Okay. Buffy did it. Buffy's very campy. That's But fair. they had really dark episodes. That's With fair. Sabrina, every episode's really, really dark, but it's also campy. Campy's not always funny. Interestingly enough, one of the darker episodes of Buffy, uh, which is the aftermath of a, a certain character's death, was very bright and sunny. Do you remember that? When when Buffy's just kind of wandering around her house, the bright sun. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're yeah. You're not talking about the episode being cheerful. You're talking about no. it just being a bright episode. Yes, it was very Joss interesting. Joss Whedon did that beautifully. He... Sorry, total sidebar, but <laughs> it is a sidebar. What are you gonna do? But I believe you can stream both Buffy and Angel on Hulu. So go ahead. More than likely, you've watched those two, but watch yeah. them again. Oh, another good. reason to watch Runaways. Watching Spike be a grown up. Yes. Although, Spike. with an American accent, which I, I know that's his natural accent, but it still bothers me. It sounds fake. It really it does. Sounds it like sounds like a British person putting on an American accent because his British accent so well. Yeah. Yeah. So done well. It really I mean, is. everything from when he played Brainiac and now when yeah. he's playing that and it, yeah. some other roles he's been in, it always sounds fake, really even though does. it's his real voice. But he does a great job. He, 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 he's a great actor, though. Yes. This, Fantastic. Yes. Oh, he lovely. embodies the characters oh. he's playing. Like, Absolutely, for, yeah. 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 Um, he he's the Neil Your Patrick buddy. Harris of like movie buddy. comic stuff. Maybe I'll give it to him. I love him. Uh, right. Stranger Things again. Yep. Stranger, not watched it at all. Stranger Things Sorry. is also uh, it, if you're a fan of the '80s and you're a fan of yeah, it's not necessarily horror. I wouldn't call it horror. It's it's not, but it is kind of that genre. Yes. Like it. You know, it's I mean, it, it's horror, but yeah, it is really horror. But it's more like you're 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 a fan of stuff like Goonies, yeah, Goonies. That's a good example. That's not horror at all, but it's very similar in feel, I guess, in a way. Which, by the way, I have not watched Goonies, so I'm just assuming here. Eighties with a creep factor is what we're basically. <laughs> yeah, it's eighties with a creep factor, not really horror, but it is. And if nothing else, supernatural there's... parallel world type thing, monsters. And there is one scene that I've seen, and I, I don't want to spoil it, but let's just say that there was a particular song that was sung by two of the characters in Beautiful Harmony that was completely and beautifully nostalgic to me, and I almost cried, and I don't even watch the show, so there's that. Yeah, it was awesome. It, it, it's a great show. It's a great nostalgia show, yeah. and um, I believe the next season, season four, will be out soon, I think. And, yeah, see, it's on season three, season three... <laughs> was awesome yeah. probably one of the best seasons that's with the song yeah. that she heard I just yep. and everybody. yeah so that's good all right so uh thank you for listening to us rambling uh but basically what we wanted to do was share with you uh things that we have watched in our uh during our time that we think are worthy of being watched uh true id and after couple but i'm also extremely picky he's definitely more I, I am i'm very very picky look who i married and, um, but I would say that even if I DNF them, that doesn't mean they're not worth your while necessarily. Um, I, I do want to watch some of these eventually. But the point is, these are ones that we feel are definitely worth your time. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to us ramble. Happy viewing. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the multiverse.